The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Say to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. How grateful we need to be for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the privileges and the opportunities that he has given graciously bestowed upon our shoulders. To represent the word of the Lord more clearly, more accurately when we are faithfully prepared to handle his word. And that is not only a duty of the pastor teacher, but in fact, even it is a duty of each and every believer to represent the word of the Lord like an ambassador for Christ. By the time, by the season, as it has come, we need to be the communicators of the word of the doctrine. And that doesn't include that he needs to be a preacher, but by his practice, as well as living of the trading manner in this life. He, each and every believer, has to be a ground and pillar of truth. Since this is satanic world, we will never understand how miserably we are failing until and unless we have a desire to understand and to know why it is even after salvation we have kept alive in this unique and great dispensation of all time. This unique and great dispensation of all time will never repeat again. If it would repeat, then it has not been called as unique. But rather, we have been thumbed out. As Allah Kenikates, new spiritual species in Christ. Never in the past, nor in the future. This great truth of indwelling trinity you, the believer, as a sanctuary. Your body doesn't belong to you, but it belongs to Christ. So that you should not defile this body doesn't mean to say worldliness. Worldliness of human viewpoint, of human view thinking. Inducing and indulging yourself into the lust patterns which Satan sponsors for you under its various schemes. But rather your body which has to be kept blameless and pure. The body and the soul and the spirit, which has to be absolutely pure and blameless. Possible to be done only under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and by no other means. Is what we, the believers, should understand, the sanctuary of our Christ. The second glory which indwells in us in this church age is our greatest privilege. That you, the believer, know out how wretched you are. You are being indwelled by the Trinity. Yes, you. Anyone who has been tagged as a believer, who has truly expressed his volition to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is a believer in Christ. You are the glory of Christ. You can go to the status of maximum glorification when you can grab in the word of the Lord more clearly, dear brethren. The techniques, the tactics, the strategies of Satan can never be known. How well our Lord has designed for His glory in this unique dispensation of the church age can hardly be estimated by these men who never know the truth. They will never realize that in this arid wilderness wherewith the men seek for happiness is not found in any other things. But we, the believers, should raise up our voice through the word of the Lord so that the entire Christendom in the east and the west, in the north and the south should know that there was a voice of the Lord when they have been designed for the blessedness of Christ in this arid wilderness. This arid wilderness, which is absolutely barren, this earth can never even produce a single soul to be saved. 
not even a single soul when we compare to the entire earth. But we the believers can have the pleasure in Christ, the blessedness, the happiness which he has sent for us in eternity past. This great blessedness, this great happiness, when we comparison with Psalms 32, 1 and 2, the great fourfold blessings which have been given for us, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is been covered. That is what verse 1 says. Happy, the Hebrew called this as an Asher psalm. Asher means happy or blessed. And there are a number of psalms that begin with this word in the Hebrew. In fact, when Psalms 1 begins, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly. The counsel of ungodly being headed and directed by Satan. But the blessing is of the man who never went astray. But rather, true blessing belongs only to that man who was and who came into our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by believing in Him. And after believing in Him, than no one else in this earth. The key that we can have in this arid wilderness, the secret for our happinesses. In fact, when the Old Testament speaks about a man being happy, but in the New Testament, we have the spiritual blessings, dear brethren. That great spiritual blessings which have not been emphasized today. Many men have lost the value of these true spiritual blessings which have been given for us in eternity past in the heavenlies. That great spiritual blessings which we need to understand, which we need to communicate, which we need to emphasize. Since Satan being in arid wilderness, never it will come to know that for a believer, what Lord has reserved and kept in eternity past. Never. That true spiritual blessings, what we are holding today, what we are having today, what we are looking today, that true spiritual blessings, which we can derive only through the knowledge of Bible doctrine, that true spiritual blessings under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, only after believing in Christ we can enjoy it. This true spiritual blessings which a believer had in the past time of the Old Testament, one believing in Jehovah, Jesus Christ. The New Testament manifested Christ. In the millennium believing in Christ. These blessings no one can look upon or understand upon apart from this royal family of God believers. Apart from this great royal family which we have in Christ, no one can understand because we the church age believers are far more greater. These New Testament believers are alikenikitesis, new spiritual species in Christ. And these New Testament believers are so great, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. In eternity past through Christ, they have been hidden, the spiritual manna. And now they have been made manifested for us. But we the believers, not able to realize the truth, want to be dry in this barren ground want to be dry not to look upon the spiritual resurrection not to be walking unto the spiritual maturity ministry but rather want to be in these useless and worthless things of this earth without christ you are going astray so in psalms 32 we get the blessing of a man who did go astray but was brought back to God. You and I may know the blessedness of that only when we use a rebound in this church age. The great provision, which is not a license to sin but a license to serve back my Lord with great truth and integrity and honors. 
this great truth which you have been given for us. This great truth, no one can deny of rebound. The psalm is also called as a martial psalm. Martial means which gives instruction. There is some special instruction here that Lord does want does not want us to miss. And this psalm gives an introduction for fourfold blessings in Christ. The first blessing is for him whose transgression has been forgiven. And today we see that man as one who has come to God owning his guilt, who has put his trust in the message that God has given through his only begotten Son. When we can believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we know that through the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, our iniquities have been forgiven. So happy is the man for whom this transgression has been blotted out. In fact, even every member of the human race has been written in the book of life. But those who do not believe in the lifetime till the point of their death, their name will be blotted out. And that the great saddest part. Because my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has died even for such kind of a moron Zakirnak. He died even for his guru Sheikh Ahmad Didad, For Wali Farad or any other cults or in fact even any member of the human race who could come into this earth. Before the rapture could occur or even in the millennium. He died as a substitutory spiritual death for each and every member of the human race, dear brother. Each and every member of the human race name has been given into the book of life, but only few people will stand there because those who fail to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, their names will be blotted out. Till your lifetime, if you are not able to believe in Christ, your name is scratched out. That meant to say what? Everyone's transgressions have been graciously forgiven. Even you as an unbeliever, inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, His Son, that is the moment itself you shall have your eternal life, your name being secured in the book of life. It doesn't require any works. Religion in this arid midst of wilderness is being raised by Satan. The defunct philosophies to be saved has been taught by Satan. These are the men, they don't want to go upon the work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. But rather, these are the men, they want to work upon their own gold and silver salvation. Gold and silver salvation is their money by which they want to do their works under the energy of their human good, human flesh. That energy of their flesh, which causes them to tell to Lord, Lord, you are not capable of saving me. It is better I work out my own salvation. And that is the inducement of Satan's mind for you to cause doubt in your thoughts. This great inducement of Satan's mind has caused many people to end up in burning of the hell. Without Christ, what is your fate? Your transgression has not been forgiven, so you are not happy. Though momentarily you may be happy with your wife, as told in Ecclesiastes 9 9 for non believers. What does it mean to say in Ecclesiastes 9 9? Ecclesiastes 9 9 tells, Enjoy the life with the wife of the youth. That's the only happiness an unbeliever can have. The divine establishment of law in the marriage. And apart from that, what he can have? No pleasure, no happiness. Why? After his death, that happiness cannot be perpetuated. That is inevitable. But whereas for a believer, that happiness is perpetuated. Why? Because he believes in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I am not telling for him the happiness which they can have over physical lust, but the happiness which they can have in the physical relationship with a respected wife and a respected husband. When a wife addresses her husband as Lord, when she has been subjection to her husband, the mandate for a woman has not been given to love her husband, but to obey her husband. But the mandate for a man has been given to love her husband, to love her wife. 
And when these both go hand in hand, they have a beautiful life. The first category, love towards God. The second category, towards the opposite sex. The third category, towards our family members or the people to whom we get along as a family concept. Or the friends. This second category to love alone, an unbeliever can enjoy because his transgression has not been forgiven. And for him, Lord has given temporary happiness in this earth through marriage. Afterwards, what? After his death, what? He ends up in misery, misery, misery. Even Zakir Naik, though he thinks he knows many things from the Quran, he can't even know a single ounce of doctrine or spiritual phenomena from Bible doctrine. And for him, only one truth is given. That truth is to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And that's the simple gospel for you. And that's the only one truth which is capable for you to be understood, to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And apart from it, there is nothing, no truth for unbelievers. Ah, but you have a good news. The good news is that when your name has been recorded in the book of life, provided you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it could be made 100% guaranteed. In your lifetime, if you fail to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your name will be blotted out from the book of life. Whether you take it, believe it, accept it, reject it or not, that is left to you and for your fate. So happy is the man whose transgression has been forgiven and we the believers are much happy. We know that. Though we are having our temporary pilgrimage in this earth, so that we can attain to the spiritual maturity of our spiritual resurrection in Christ. Till that time, as our Lord chastens, we need to go for our sins, what we are performing in the personal sin traits. And by using rebound, we get back into suffering for blessing and given installments for us. The ultimate objective for the believer being to grain grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine more clearly, more specifically. And that is what you and I need to understand. Our transgression has been forgiven and we are the most happy man on this earth. Because after our death, we are having no more sorrow, no more tear, no more pain. No more death. And we shall be with the heaven of Lord forever and forever. And not only that, we have been practiced right now in this earth to concentrate upon one simple dogmatical truth. And that one single dogmatical truth, dear brethren, whether you believe it or like it or not, in the millennium rule of my Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord forever and forever. And for the believers, when this truth has been given, why can't you practice while you're still alive in this earth, getting up on your knees? So that in the heaven, when you're getting back, it could be more easy for you that you've already been practicing by staying up on your knees. While there is age for you, while there is strength for you, while there is a privilege for you, while there is a greater grace which has been bestowed upon you, why do you want to ignore the truth, dear Lord? That great truth of getting down upon your knees when Apostle Paul has also did it. When Moses has did it, and so many great men of the Old Testament time, they have done it. Why can't we practice it right now and make it an applicable point in our lives to come? That when we get back into heaven, after this pilgrimage tour, can we tell proudly to the Lord, Lord, at least once I could read Bible upon your knees for the grace that thou hast bestowed upon me. Lord, at least once I have written the entire Bible upon my knees for the praise of your glory. Lord, at least once I have written the entire Bible of Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic upon your knees. Which strength you have bestowed upon me, can we tell that? Dear brethren, we need to be much thankful for the grace which Lord has bestowed upon us. And if you are not able to prove that thankfulness to the Lord, the grace which has been bestowed upon us will be in vain. So we need to understand the grace of our Lord graciously bestowed upon us. The great grace number one, you have been absolutely saved. Your transgression being blotted out. The first happiness to the believers whose sin has not been recognized. But whereas for Zakir Naik, Sheikh Ahmad Didad, or Wali Farad, whichever they could come, their sins are not yet been forgiven 
because their sins, though they have been paid on the cross, have not been acknowledged, have been claimed, because the way for them to be alive is through this only one unique person, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who dogmatically claimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is what, dear brother, and you and I need to understand in truth. Your sins have been blotted out, nailed it on the cross. Now it's your time to believe that work or not, that your sins have been forgiven or not. If you say, no, I don't believe in that, I will follow upon my own circumcision, I will follow upon my own good works, I will look upon the gold and silver works. Lord, help you at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brethren. We don't have anything more to tell to you than we enjoy in our faith that the remission, the forgiveness of our sins through the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whosoever believes in Him, they have received this remission, forgiveness. And in fact, even every poor sinner who believes what Lord God has testified concerning His Son is also been forgiven. The testification is that we believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The second blessedness what we find is the man whose sin is been covered, Kapoor. Yam Kapoor, what we could find in the throne room of this Ark of the Covenant, the two cherubs constantly looking and being blessed. Because his sin has been atoned, his sin has been propitiated. His sin has been given as a satisfaction. This word, translated covered, is just one from the word that has been used throughout the Old Testament for atonement. And when David is really saying is, blessed is he whose sin is atoned for. The actual meaning of atonement is what? Covering. Not substitution, but satisfaction. God found a covering for sin when he gave Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to die in our room and in our state. So now he says, blessed is he whose sin is covered. The precious blood blots out all the record and his sin is been covered. And then in verse 2 we have, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guilt. Third blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. That means to mark iniquity down. If our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ blotted out all our sins the night he saved me and immediately began putting down more sins against me I would be no better off in the future than in the past so blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity God is not marking down sin against his people as something they must face in the day of judgment the moment I believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ his precious blood covers that is what as a metaphor Haima the whole record from the cradle to the grave and we need to go there is no law of double jeopardy for us we need to go and claim in the privacy of our priesthood the confession of our sins and get back into fellowship with him and it means and then does it mean that I can still sin and this and does it not make any difference no, the moment my responsibility as a sinner having to do with the God of judgment ended with eternity, my responsibility as a child and then growing as a son has having to do with my father began. And many people fail to realize the simple dogmatical truths in the pulpits. They still want to refine the responsibility of a sinner. They still want to reform the standards of them telling that you can pay penance and you can get rid of it. No, but you need to look. You have been dead to your old sin nature, but now you are in Christ. You are under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You are here given the great privilege of all time, dear brethren. And now you have been given a privilege to be a servant of Lord God, the Father. A born slave as a pastor teacher. You have been a child to desire the sincere milk of the word of the Lord as told in First Peter 2, 1 and 2 and erase out all evil, holy, hypocritical manner. You have been told to consume the bread. You have been told to eat strong meat, the three stages of your spiritual growth, so that you can become a strong man, a mature man. The great spiritual heavenly aristocracy given to us. The great chivalry given to us. We, the believers, have been given this great privilege of all time to look and to understand the truth more clearly, more eminently. 
because never in the past has been given this great privilege. But we, the believers alone, have been given this great privilege, dear brethren. And this great privilege is what we need to understand the responsibility laid down that to henceforth we are not a sinner. But by using the privacy of our priesthood through rebound, we need to take the responsibility, growing from child, then to a man, and then to an adult man, a mature man, a mature man of responsibility upon our shoulders. And then it has been written, if you are failing and if you are still carrying around, you don't kill your own son, but rather you chastise and correct him and instruct him. In Hebrews 12:6, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And every son is we in Christ. We are no longer called to be as bastards by not enduring the chastisement, but rather we are being called as a son whom the Lord loves. He corrects them. But for your happiness, he never imputes any sin to such a one. Every believer is made the righteousness of God in Christ for him. And the fourth part is, blessed is the man in whose spirit there is no guile or guile, G-U-I-L-E. A man in whose spirit there is no guile is not a sinless person. There was only one that is our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, as well in Romans 3.23. There is not just a man that doeth good and sinneth not. This is true of believers as well as of unbelievers. However, the man in whose spirit there is no guilt is a man who is not trying to cover up and hide. As long as a man is covering his sin, there is a guilty nature in him. There is guileness in him. When our Lord David covered his sin, there was guilt in him. But when he came out frankly and acknowledged his sin, I have sinned against the Lord, then there was no guile in him. In today's pulpit, the pastor of occupying the church should be much made known and worried and understand and look and try to look and try to get to the point. If there is no sin in you, have you ever noted, have you ever thought that are you true to the word of the Lord and for his work? Are you true to Bible doctrine and for the word of the Lord or not? If there is no guile in you, have you communicated the word of the truth in exegesis or not? And the pastor teacher who has been given this privilege to communicate the truth, at the same time, the believer also should be responsible to tell I have learned the whole doctrine. And if he is not here to learn the whole doctrine, dear brethren, then take it sure. You need to answer at the judgment seat of Christ. There is no excuse for your covering, but rather acknowledging it and correcting it. Because the moment it has gone, it has gone. But right from this moment at least, stay faithful to the Lord in the midst of this arid wilderness. And this arid wilderness is what many people they are looking around for happiness. But happy is the man who believes in Christ, whose sin has been covered, who has been atoned, and to whom Lord doesn't impute iniquity, and the one who does not cover his sins with guilt consciousness, but rather looks upon the word of the Lord and gives number one priority for Bible doctrine. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. And the next step we shall cover our discourse. Because we are here to raise our voice to tell the truth. And not to keep quiet. It is, though it is Satan's world, we don't care for it, but we have the indwelling control power and ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is the creator of this universe. Though Satan is a ruler, why to worry? We have the great indwelling ministry in our hearts, mind and souls. We need to look upon the truth. We need to understand the truth. We need to obey the truth. And we need to be constantly on the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to get back into the fellowship of the truth. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Whether you want to take that happiness in Christ, in this arid wilderness, by believing in Him, so that your transgression has been covered, so that no sin has been imputed unto you, and furthermore, after believing in Christ, no iniquity has also been added to you. 
but by your own volition, you think in your own guilt consciousness that you have been causing that guileness in you. But rather using your royal priesthood to get back into fellowship with the Lord and to be into the praise of His glory in His grace. Whether they are north or south, east or west, the grace and the salvation ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has been bestowed greatly in the sinful mankind. And if you are not interested to look upon this simple dogmatical truths, Lord help you, because you know very well the judgment seat of Christ reigns in truth and in the righteousness of Him. There is no other substitute for His standards to be compromised. So which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to believe, an unbeliever tells to Lord God the Father by believing the gospel, which is to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. That is, the moment itself you shall have this eternal life. This eternal life is for him free, graciously bestowed by faith alone in Christ alone. There is no more works that has been credited to him, but only the one work of saving Christ on the Calvary has been given to him graciously, and he has been atoned forever. He has been propitiated because of the expiation paid on the cross. And whether you want to enjoy it or not, that is left to you. For the believer, it is very simple to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. When he is under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound. And when he is under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is very clear, very true, very simple. That we, the believers of the church age, have been given this great unique privilege to be controlled, to be indwelt by the Trinity, far less, only Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that truth will make us to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and claim the case, whether we are faithful to His Word or not, whether we have His Word in our soul or not. And whereas for the past teacher, the mandate is very clear, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. And for the diameter of my witnesses wherewith they have been called, they need to answer back to the Lord and tell, We were there for you, Lord, in this earth as a voice of truth. There is nothing that should hinder him. If there is anything, that should be only the word of the Lord which should tell. And if it is there any hindrance, it should be his laziness and negligence and ignorance and arrogance. But not his constant preparation to rightly divide the word of truth. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. So, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.